Um, hi, my name is Gary Holman, uh, former CRD director for Salt Spring and former MLA for Saanich North and the Islands, and I'll be voting no uh, in the incorporation referendum coming up in September 9th. There are people on both sides of this issue who I respect, um, but in my personal view, uh, I think the, the downside risks of incorporation far away the upside. Um, and I think there's some serious misconceptions about the implications of incorporation on Salt Spring. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of them, at least my perspective on those misconceptions. One is that the, the trust will still be here. We'll still have the trust and a municipality uh, as well. And of course, that's technically true. But make no mistake, the island's trust will be significantly weakened on Salt Spring as a result of incorporation. And this isn't speculation. It's not um, speculating about what a council would do or wouldn't do or the, the kinds of individuals that you would uh, get elected. Um, th these are changes that are hardwired in the legislation. These are absolutely clear. This is what happens as a result of incorporation. And of course, the main thing that happens is that you replace a local trust committee on which there are three trustees um, with a council uh, where you have two trustees uh, out of seven councillors. So you have seven councillors, only two of whom are trustees. Councillors are not the same thing as trustees, uh, legally uh, or in any other respect. Trustees are much more strongly bound by the preserve and protect mandate. A municipality, uh, according to the legislation, has to give regard to the trust mandate. But uh, that's a pretty fuzzy phrase. And that's the single most important thing that happens as a result of incorporation is that you essentially replace a land use decision body uh, comprised uh, entirely of trustees with a land use decision body, only two of which are trustees. And at the same time, you uh, combine land use decisions, you meld land use decisions with servicing decisions at precisely the same time that you take on as a municipality huge new financial risk, particularly around roads, particularly around policing. Uh, so that creates a completely different dynamic. This isn't speculation. This is how it works. Um, the other thing, of course, is if a local trust committee, local trust committees as municipalities have to have their OCP, uh, their, their OCPs and changes in their OCP, the official community plan approved by trust council. If there's a disagreement between a local trust committee and trust council, uh, the Trust Council decision on that is final. There is no right of appeal. That's the end of the story for a local trust committee. A municipality, on the other hand, if they come to a disagreement with Trust Council about changes in official community plans, which set your basic land use uh, policy direction for the community, if there's a difference of an opinion, a municipality has the right to appeal uh, a Trust Council veto to the minister. So effectively, they can end run trust council. So this isn't speculation. This is how it works. And so it's difficult for me to understand how anyone looking at that objectively could not come to the conclusion that the trust is weakened as a result of incorporation. Now, if you think that's a good idea, that's fine. Everybody has a right to vote on whatever basis they want. But let's be absolutely clear about this misconception. The trust is there, but essentially in name only, it will be weakened. And the preserve and protect mandate will be weakened as a result of incorporation. Uh, another thing you hear quite commonly is, you know, gee, we just can't think, we just can't get things done on Salt Spring. And in part, that's related because we can't get grants. And uh, as a former CRD director for Salt Spring for six years, I can, and, and my experience subsequent to that, I can say unequivocally that is not true. Uh, Salt Spring, uh, compared to any other community in British Columbia of our size, whether incorporated or not, has a record that's quite enviable. Uh, when you think of the things that we've accomplished on this island, 
We've protected 5,000 acres of green space since 2001, including Bur Bur Burgoyne Bay and uh, Salt Spring Island uh, Conservancy acquisitions. 5,000 acres, no other community of our size um, in British Columbia has that kind of record. We've built a library. We've built an indoor swimming pool. We've upgraded uh, water and sewage treatment systems. Uh, we've upgraded Lady Minto Hospital. We've established an award-winning uh, public transit system. Um, again, all of these things, uh, any other community of its size in British Columbia would be quite envious of that record. And in order to achieve those things, Salt Spring has been incredibly successful in getting grants from senior governments. Um, so I, I did a, a, a rough estimate of uh, the grants for a number of those various things, some of which I had some direct involvement in. And since 2001, Salt Spring has received over $60 million in grants from senior governments, that would be regional district, the province, and the federal government, uh, to achieve a number of the things that I've just mentioned. That's a record that's unparalleled. You add to that the reputation that Salt Spring has, not just in British Columbia, but in Canada, in North America, and in fact, the world. We're considered a mecca for the arts, uh, for environmental in initiatives, um, uh, for creativity. Uh, th this is an island uh, that, that has a record that's really, really unmatched. And uh, so it's, it's particularly important when we're pointing to the possibility of a change in governance, which according to its proponents is going to fix all of our problems and all of a sudden we'll be able to get grants that we couldn't get before and we'll be able to accomplish all, all these things. Uh, I, I would say consider the record that Salt Spring has. Consider the achievements that Salt Spring uh, has been able to accomplish with tens of millions of dollars in grants from senior governments. So one of the other issues that's um, also raised with regard to municipalities and comparing to our current rural system of governance, which admittedly is fragmented and has some issues around coordination, integration of services. Uh, there are ways to fix that though, by the way, and I wanna talk about that a little later, but uh, be careful what you wish for when it comes to municipalities. And as um, MLA for the last four years, I've uh, seen at close hand uh, three of the municipalities within the constituency on the Saanich Peninsula. And I've come to understand some things that perhaps weren't as clear to me before. But uh, municipalities truly do have more fiscal power. Uh, but, get in, but again, you want to uh, be careful what you uh, wish for there. For example, um, municipalities have the authority to borrow money without taxpayer approval. That is not possible under the current rural system. Uh, an example of that recently was the Sydney Council, which just borrowed, um, fairly recently borrowed, $10 million dollars without taxpayer approval of any kind, no referendum, no counter petition, so-called, uh, because they have the authority to do that. A municipality has the authority to do that. Um, is that something that taxpayers here on, uh, on Salt Spring Island want? Do we want a government entity that can borrow money without your approval? And it goes well beyond that. Uh, municipalities, um, also have the ability to change service levels, to delete services, to add services, again, without taxpayer approval. In our current system, that is not possible. If you're gonna create a new service, for example, public transit had to be approved by voters on Salt Spring, despite the fact that we were getting uh, $100,000 a year for the provincial government, our local contribution uh, had to be funded by local taxpayers. That had to be approved by local taxpayers. Uh, a municipality can make those changes without reference to taxpayers at all. And if a municipality is taking on huge new fiscal responsibilities, if I was a service, an existing service on Salt Spring, I'd be a little bit concerned about that because you're all of a sudden gonna be competing with these huge new responsibilities, particularly roads. 
and municipalities can change those service levels, delete them uh, without any reference at all to taxpayers. So in fact, the current system gives taxpayers more control over government and how they spend their money. Um, and again, back to the, uh, the implications of incorporation that are set out in legislation, you are also melding land use planning authority with service delivery authority. At the same time, you're taking on these huge new responsibilities. So yes, you do have more power, you do have more authority. And if I was a taxpayer, um, I'd be a little concerned uh, about that. So the, the final point I wanted to mention is um, with regard to the suggestion that incorporation is the only way we can improve governance on Salt Spring Island. That is not true. Uh, there are all kinds of ways we already have improved governance and continue can continue to do that in the future. For example, the establishment of a transportation commission on Salt Spring, um, which oversees public transit and, and pathway construction on Salt Spring. That was a new service approved by taxpayers. Also a great improvement in uh, governance and uh, filled a, a, a key service gap on Salt Spring. So we, we can make those improvements. Um, we could go much further than that. We could create under existing legislation uh, a local community commission that would oversee all of uh, CRD service delivery so under existing legislation, uh, you can elect four or six local community commission members in addition to a, C uh, to a director who would sit on a CRD director who would sit on the CRD board. So in effect, it would be a, a mini council overseeing uh, all of services on Salt Spring Island. So that would broaden representation. It, it uh, would facilitate greater integration and coordination of services. And if you started to bring improvement districts like the fire district and the water district under that uh, model, um, so uh, again, that, that improves uh, coordination and integration of services, also allows those services to have access to infrastructure grants, which they can't as improvement districts. Uh, also allows renters to vote, only property owners can vote under improvement districts. Um, so you get some of the advantages of incorporation um, without taking on 265 kilometers of poorly built, poorly maintained roads, without uh, taking on the risks to the island's trust, to the mandate of the island's trust that uh, I discussed before. So you can make improvements in government without the downsides. Um, you can also increase the number of trustees. In fact, several years ago, Trust Council and the province agreed that Salt Spring could have four trustees. The Trust Council even agreed that those trustees could all vote at Trust Council, which again would broaden uh, representation locally. Um, it would uh, downplay the role that the off-island chair plays. So again, you can make these improvements um, under the current system, under the current rural system, without taking on the risks of incorporation. And in fact, in 2010, the locally elected officials of the day wrote the province asking the province in 2010 to undertake another incorporation study. The province wrote back suggesting that what Salt Spring should consider is something like a local community commission to try that on, to see if that, uh, if the improvements that that could bring in governance would be enough to satisfy the, the needs of the day. And that advice uh, was rejected. And in fact, the province has, um, has uh, reversed itself in, in that view. But in 2010, the province was suggesting exactly that, that there were improvements that could be made in governance under our local system uh, without taking on the financial risks of incorporation or the threat to the island's trust and its preserve and protect mandate. So for all of these reasons, I'm gonna be voting no on September 9th. I fully respect uh, anyone who believes that incorporation is the right thing to do for the island, 
uh, for the reasons I've described. Uh, I don't think it is the right reason. Uh, I think it will weaken the trust. I think uh, the fiscal pressures that a new municipality will be taking on uh, and the melding of land use authority and service delivery decisions uh, is a dangerous dynamic to establish. Look at the record of this island, look at what we've accomplished, and we're just started. We can do much more under the current system, and we can improve governance under the current system in a number of ways without taking on those financial risks, without weakening the trusts. And for all these reasons, I'm going to be voting no on September 9th.